super amazing. And because of that, we have the new shipping program, Why Don't Go. We have the best shipping program in the industry. Um, out of stocks. How are out of stocks these days? They're so good. Like, they, we don't have them. It's because their team's so amazing, and they've done a really good job to make sure we have products in stock. Um, she just told me that by the end of 2019, we will have 11 more partner farms. Yeah, that's a lot. She is doing an amazing job. She's beautiful inside and outside. We're blessed to have her young living. She's doing a sensational job. by, you know, people for all around the world for, again, a long time. 
but no one could get it at the commercial level until Gary got engaged with it. He was the one that went around to all these places in the world, um, which ultimately led to the challenge that he got when he got bit by uh, and got a virus. But it's because of his passion to find a pure source of oil around the world for you. No one was bringing the level of commercial grade, pure authentic, authentic oil, therapeutic oil, to people before Gary. And it was his work that he did out in the industry to identify uh, the right partners. He has always said the best way to get the highest possible quality oil is to know the source. Develop relationships with the farmers. Go to visit them. Have dinner with their family. Know what's important to them. Again, building that relationship drives the trust, mutual respect, and then the long-term business success for Young Living. And that's what we did, that's what my team does. I have a large team of people that travel around the world to some amazing places to replicate as best as they can what Gary did. And it's amazing because they are committed to Young Living because they're committed to delivering you the best. And it's all started by what Gary brought to us. So, you guys have seen this before, right? We have three types of farms and only three types of farms. Partner farms, actually the most important one is corporate farms, right? So those are the farms that Young Living owns, we manage, they're our staff that report up to Young Living, they, they are, get a Young Living paycheck. Um, we, we manage the entity, the entire entity. And then the next level, and you've also heard a lot about that, are partner farms. Partner farms are literally an extension of Young Living Farms. So we spent a tremendous amount of time with them. We do best practice sharing. We visit them, they visit us, we learn as much as we can, we give them tips, we help them with their yields, we do long-term investments with them, we give them grants and other monies to help support maybe community services and other activities. If they need upgrades in their, their distillery equipment, we help support them. This is a very, very close relationship. And so, can anyone guess how many Young Living and Partner Farms we have right now? 18. 18. What's the number? 18. Close. Yeah, 18. That's right. Congratulations. Very good. So 18. And we have, as Jeff said, we have many more along the way. And then the, the next level is CV Seal Certified Suppliers. And we have many CV Seal Certified Suppliers. And let me tell you something. There is no difference in quality from C to Seal certified suppliers to our farms because we have the highest level of standards and no matter where we get them sourced from, we will not compromise as Gary has taught us. So those are the three types of farms we have. Now, um, everyone has been to at least farm, one Young Living farm, right? Mona? That was a great experience, right? So we have a total of eight corporate farms, many places around the world. And again, it's where we like to establish the best practices, which we then leverage with our partner farms and CD Sales Certified Suppliers to make them even better. We're doing so much work, particularly at Mona, and uh, there's a gentleman who one day I'm gonna have you listen to, but he can tell you the story of the work that we're doing at Mona that sets us apart from any other farm that's out there, from how we manage our soil, to how we manage the water systems there, to how uh, we turn um, byproducts that come out as a result of our distillation process into beautiful peat that is then reapplied to our land to make it the most fertile possible soil that's available. So fantastic work there. So this, these eight sites here are where we learn, we teach, we investigate. You probably saw test plots when you went to Mona yesterday with some, like you may have seen Vitex. Somebody came to me, what is that? That's Vitex. That's, we don't grow it here, but guess what? We're learning how to grow best here in this farm so we can teach other farms on how to plant, cultivate it, and make sure it's the right quality for young living going forward. So that's why these farms are so critically important for us. And why we'll always have our own farms, because it sets us apart and it puts us in the position of being leaders in the industry for best practices and highest quality and authentic products. And then when we do this, we teach others. And that's, that brings the whole industry up. And just a quick graphic, these are, you know, it's kind of busy, probably not hard to see, but this is probably in a lot of books that you've seen before. And it just represents where we have all of our partner farms, Young Living Farms, and all of our corporate offices around the world. 
So I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna take you through a beautiful journey. A journey of what it takes to have a young uh, oil join our portfolio so we can now serve it to you, give it to you, and have it be a part of our you know, your lifestyle. And I'm gonna talk about an oil in particular, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But it's a really long process. I've had people come to me and say, oh, I have access to you know, five acres of land, and I'd love to you know, plant something for Young Living and uh, be able to have, be a part of Young Living Network. And it takes years because of what I'm about to share with you to make sure that they are up to speed and have the right level of systems that they can sustain for the long haul and meet our expectations. So I'll, I'll take you through the journey. So um, we go around the world. We visit many, many, many farms, many people out there to see what, what the best practices are learn from them, but then we go to spend a lot of time at our, our farms to do audits. We audit almost every single farm that we come in contact with, and it's complex. So some of these pictures here are India, and I went with the team to India uh, late last year, it was November time frame. We have pictures from Madagascar here, there's pictures from Australia, that's Australian sandalwood, um, sacred sandalwood uh, on the far right there. So we go all over the world, this is just a handful. So this year alone, we visited over 30 countries um, doing audits, building relationships with uh, our, our farmers and growers. And so it's a complex job. We never sleep, but this is all to ensure we have the, the perfect quality for you. Um, but there are some of the journeys, and to get to some of these places, Madagascar, for example, from, from Utah, takes a total of about 48 hours to get there. 48 hours. And that includes airplanes, boats, we did a canoe, um, and then we had to hike up, mount around uh, crazy areas in order to get to the places where we finally needed to be. So these are complex projects, but they're all worth it. We learned so much and it's been a fantastic experience. But the oil I want to talk about is Fragonia. Fragonia is a beautiful oil. And did anyone see my YL Go Drop video yesterday, the Facebook Live? You were all busy on the farm, so you probably didn't see it. But as one of the things that I dropped into the box was a Fragonia bottle. And it's, it's because it's gonna be another couple years before it actually gets to you because of the complex process. But Fragonia oil is um, really, the, it, where it comes from is mostly Australia. And it's a beautiful oil. It reminds me a little bit of tea tree, but it has a more fragrant floral uh, aroma to it. It's absolutely beautiful, fantastic oil. And we started working with a, a potential partner years ago. We started in 2016, beginning of 2016 and it still has not come to market yet. Not because they're doing anything wrong, because that's how we manage to make sure that we get the highest purity quality oil. So I wanna go through the different steps that we, that we embark on. So the first step, and feel free to take pictures of, I'm gonna have some detail that talks through each one of these steps. Take pictures because I want you to know what we do and why we're so different than any other oil company, essential oil company out there. So uh, we do a deep dive in authenticity of the species. And here's what some of that looks like. We look at the records of where the seeds are coming from. We test to make sure there's no GMO seeds whatsoever in those batches because we have them validate the certificates that it's not. We do DNA testing on the seeds to again make sure that they're the right species by a botanist, and then they ver verify that with reports that they send back to us that we review, and then we audit those facilities to make sure that they know what they're doing so when they tell us it is pure, it is totally pure. So those are some of the things we do with authenticity, and I'm gonna run through some of these really quickly. We check agricultural practices at the farm. So what you see there, you probably, the, the top left picture is a farm in, uh, this is um, actually, this is actually the farm that we're gonna get uh, Fragonia from. So we, we looked at their entire drip line. We look at how they do the irrigation, for example, and that's a map of their entire drip line. And we look at the source of where this water is coming from, and we walk the entire length of the drip line just to make sure there's no possible areas where it's going into areas that we think this could cause some potential contamination. So we, we do that, and also it needs to follow their map. They, this is all mapped out usually, and we wanna make sure that where they say their source is coming from, it truly is. And down at the bottom right is where they're taking samples of the source of the water uh, for any test for dozens and dozens of things to make sure the water meets our quality expectations. So as far as uh, what we do there, when we're there with some of the things we do, soil, 
we check to make sure that the soil uh, nutrient level is what we need it to be. And if not, we recommend how they do the proper types of amendments to get it to where it needs to be. And we tell them what is lacking. If the oil, the oil is lack, or the soil is lacking some kind of um, my, microbials to make it to maximize the root growth, we share that with them so that they can now um, amend their soil. We look at the water, as I mentioned to you. We look at the source, where it's coming from, where the runoff is. Where is it, is it going to an area that could potentially their outcome is messing up someone else's property or land? Are they permitted to do that? So we, we review all of that as well. And then um, how they, they're making sure that they're not adding anything to the soil that we don't, we have a list of do nots. Like clearly they're not gonna use any pesticides. They're not gonna use this and that and the other. We have a list and we review that. We make sure that that does not exist anywhere in their property and we test the soil to ensure that it's of a, a pure state. So let's go into uh, legal compliance. Oh, I forgot to keep pushing this to get everything up. Everyone loves Matt French, the legal guy. He's so cool. <laughs> but his team helps us from a compliance standpoint. And what we do is we spend a lot of time here in this area to make sure that we have all of the right documentation needed. Because it's not just that we are doing things compliantly, but that the places that we're sourcing our oils from are also compliant. Every single farm we've visited, now this will blow your mind, we end up through our network of lawyers and we spend time with their uh, Department of Commerce and other places in those local markets. We learn and we actually teach the farmers what they need to do. Think about it, a lot of these farmers maybe are family owned, small time, they don't have business degrees, they probably grew up, it's been the way of life. They don't know the law, so we, our job is to go there and teach them the law. Here's the permits that you need in order to do things the right way. Here's the documentation you need. Here's who you need to talk to. So we spend a lot of time doing that. So again, here's some examples of some of the things that we look for. Um, that they're complying with the right regulations, critically important, not just us, but they are as well. They're extension of us. They are part of Young Living, part of our family. We don't want them to get into any trouble, just like we wouldn't want Young Living to get into any trouble. So we validate and verify uh, that they're doing business the right way that they're in compliance with all of the right laws um, and acts that support not just the U.S., but their local government. Um, and we, in, uh, deforestation, you see the last bullet there, we spend a lot of time that, because there are some sources that we get that are um, where it's out in the natural, and they have, they have to have permits to make sure that they can go do that. It may not be a farm, but they can go get that, but they have to have a permit to make sure that they can't just go wildcraft when it's someone else's private property or that the government allows them to wildcraft and their practices do not lead to deforestation of that particular species. So we, again, and if you think about it, there's a lot of independent people that are just going to pick on their own and they bring some of their, their stuff to a collector collection point. And so each one of those people, we have to know who they are and they have to provide documentation that they have a specific permit to do that work. It's complex. Think about it. I, we went to India, and there are probably over a thousand independent people that are gathering the jasmine flowers for us. Each one of those people have to be permitted, and we review their documentation to make sure that they're doing things the right way. No one else does that in the industry. I will tell you that for a fact. So, and so this, what I'm sharing with you right now, we have an audit booklet that we take with us when we go visit. And then at the end of this, this, this aud these audits, the, it's probably as many pages as the Bible, I'm telling you, because we, we, we're documenting all of these and we're getting pictures of their farms and their lands and everything that they have. And so it's pretty amazing. We get pictures of the people who work in the farms. And so it's a huge book that we end up with at the end of, at the end of these tours. So we have a huge library uh, documenting all of these items. But social practices is another big one. Again, no one else really looks at. We make sure that, for example, if kids are too young to work for, based on what the community uh, expects, they can't work for Young Living. They can't go and pick for Young Living. Go pick for somebody else, not for Young Living. Um, like so we went to a place in Europe, and there was a, a little boy. He was about 10 years old, and we asked, "Why? Why is this kid here?" And they swore up and down that he was just there with his mother, and he wasn't picking. He, you know, he, he's underage. He is 10, but he's not part of the network of people that supply um, the, the botanicals to Young Living. And I said, "Well, he should be in school. Why isn't he in school?" Well, they're families were gypsies, they travel from place to place. I said, okay, well, well when they're on your property, we're gonna give you a grant, because this is part of a partner farm. We're gonna give you a grant, and you're gonna help build a school so that when their, their kids come here, they have a place to learn. We 
check out, we check out safe practices. Do they have the right safety equipment so that they don't get hurt? They're using machinery. Are they old enough to use that machinery? Have they been taught? What are the training records? All things that we look at to make sure that they're doing right with the people. Wages. We look at what the local wages are. We want them to be at least above minimum wage so that they're not, um, we're not it's not slave labor. That is absolutely nothing we will ever support. So we, we verify all of this during our trips. <laughs> so this is just some pictures. Actually, this is Madagascar. Um, amazing place. And, we get things from like uh, vanilla, we get uh, uh, black pepper, we get ylang ylang, a number of different oils from the Madagascar area. Just a beautiful place and it, again, um, uh, families that have been um, doing this for years, poverty level is high, and so our goal is always how do we leave, not leave, but when we leave that facility after the tour, how, what are we gonna go back and think about so we can make a better place for them? How do we make them better off? Again, is it schools? Is it access to health care? Is it improved wages? So we look at all of those things and we come back with a plan with that supplier to help help this community to be in a better place. And so I love some of the things that Young Living is doing. We absolutely make a difference around the world for the places that source our products. <laughs> Harvesting and collection. Again, another uh, intense process that uh, we spend a lot of time looking into. So, you know, I don't, uh, one day you're gonna have, this is a gentleman called David Little. He joined our organization about a year and a half ago and he's just been fantastic. He's an agronomist by degree and he knows the best practices for how we harvest, how we plant, um, and how to just maintain our, the richness of our soil to have the optimal quality of product for us. And you know, it's amazing when you hear him talk through this and you will at some point in time. But even things like, we spend a lot of time thinking about weeds and weed control and how we do that the right way. We think about, um, we have a lot of host plants. You may not notice it, but you'll see a lot more as you visit more farms. We have, we have the main, farm, main item that we're growing and harvesting, but then in between there, we tend to have host plants. And the host plants, the reason why they're there is to help drive improvement in the soil quality, and they help build the root system of the plant that we're trying to target. So it's truly exciting to, to see what types of host plants we can have to help maximize the effectiveness of the plant that we're trying to, to distill. Um, and then with that, what we need to make sure is when we have those host plants, we, we gotta make sure that they stay separate. They don't, we don't want them to get into the lavender otherwise. So it takes quite a bit of planning and, tr and training to, of our people on the farm to teach them how to do this the right way. But that's the list of things that we do just to make sure, again, we optimize our quality. And these are audits that just not, they don't just happen at our partner farm and CD sales certified suppliers. Our own farms are required to go through these, these same audits and we give them feedback and we hold them accountable for timelines. And we hold them accountable for getting it done when we say we need to get it done. And they come back to us with a report telling us the detail. And then we go back to visit again to make sure that they've done everything on the audit and it's been closed out. This, this just shows um, the plot. So for the, the, the Fogonia oil that comes out of um, Australia, this just shows a plot of area that they currently have. The area in orange is where they did a test plot for us. So they just do a test to make sure that it's gonna be viable, that they have the right skills and understand how to grow that particular uh, botanical before it gets uh, uh, distilled. Um, and then once it gets to a good place, and so we're now at a point where we've approved what's happened in the orange plot, and then we, we actually help them um, to secure this part of the land. We gave them uh, funding up front. And that's part of what I love about the part of Farm and Young Living. So they wouldn't be able to afford to buy this land on their own now because it's Again, it's like four years before we're gonna be able to bring this to market. That's cash that they have to lay out front. These are farmers that don't have the money. So we use our grant program or other programs where we either loan them the money up front and then they'll just help us on the back when the oil comes to fruition, we'll get that money back. Or we'll just go and buy the land for them and, and they can do it because we have a longer term contract as a partner farm that um, we'll just, they, they own it and we'll just pay for it to make sure uh, it stays just for our use. But that big box on the left side is what they just purchased about a year ago to plant Fergonia for us, and that's gonna be just Young Living's plot for Fergonia. Um, extraction and distillation, and I won't go into details because Mike spent a lot of time talking about the science and, uh, and what he and his team does, but we test for everything. So we test a, a sample before it gets shipped to us to make sure it's what they're shipping us is gonna be good. Then after that, they ship the big lot and then we test it all over again for 
a lot of different uh, key criteria that Mike and Source just shared. Uh, so it's really exciting what we do here. And again, no one else has the level of testing that we have. And that's what, again, sets us apart from anyone else. And then the last part of things that we audit is traceability. So what kind of drums do they use? Where are they sourcing their drums? Where are they storing the materials? Who along what route has access to the oil so that there's no opportunity for someone to put something in, take something out, do whatever. We have a complete mapping of each oil of where it goes, through, the ports that it goes through, where it sits in inventory, who has access to it, what the name of those companies are, so that there's no, no point where something could be introduced where it could be a problem. We even have tags on our drums that are locked, and if it opens up or it doesn't come sealed to us, we know that someone had touched that. And the only person that has those tags are the, the farmers themselves, the people who are doing the distillation. So that's how we guarantee traceability from end to end. It's just some of the things that we look for when we are working with them. And last but not least, clearly, is testing. And again, Mike should have talked probably quite a bit about this, but we test a lot, right, as I just mentioned. And it's uh, just really exciting, some of the things that we do that just set us apart. Um, then the last thing I just wanted to share is a little bit about uh, our partner farm. And as I mentioned, we give these grants to farmers and there's no expectation for them to pay it back. This is all about ensuring that they have the quality and they have the purity that we need. And we keep, we're keeping them su sustainable and whole for the long haul. So we, we have uh, these grants. We've given out about $500,000 so far in support of this grant. That was just over the past year. So it's really exciting to see what some of them are doing. So an example is what I talked about with uh, the farm that where there was a young child and now he's building a community center where he can hire a teacher to teach the children when they come into the farm um, so they're not sitting there idle, they're at least getting their education. So that's one example that where when, we, when you buy oils from Young Living, you're helping people in our world live better lives. So that is it in terms of what I was going to share. However, this oil for Gonia, we started working on this in January of 2016. And very best case, we'll, we'll be able to bring it to market in 2019, end of next year, but most likely it'll be 2020. And so I have one bottle here. Farm. So everyone stand up. If you've been to at least one farm, stand up. Everyone is standing. Now, one farm. All right. I need to stretch All out right. my back. Stand